Hello Church and uh, welcome to Homey Sunday and um, session four of our series on practical Christianity. Um, so excited to be with you today. I thought of just quickly recapping the reason for Homey Sundays um, to make that clear again and to stir the vision in our hearts for that again. Um, one of the functions of biblical church we see in scripture is eating together. As believers, eating together, gathering in homes, eating together. Jesus did it. Many of his um, dialogues with his disciples was around meals at the early church. They broke bread. They went from house to house breaking bread, which means they had communion, but also means that they ate together. And so it's not something that um, we do when we gather as a whole church. We maybe have, uh, you know, family feasts and stuff every now and again, but it's not. Um, it's not gathering around table at home, eating hearty food and having real conversation. And so um, in a city, in a culture that we're in here, it's very individualistic. It presses against that um, even more, against that value. And we believe that we're called to be a family on a mission and a home in the city. And that through Homey Sundays, um, we're actually making uh, this prophetic stance and saying that we will be family that gathers around tables and that every time that you do it, you invite people you know, that you don't know, you get to know the whole church in uh, the context of, of, of a meal around a table at home. That's, that's the heart behind it, to be family and to, um, uh, to give um, life to this function of church, which we believe is so relevant. For us um, in this day and age. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope um, it brings life to you. So we also use it to share this messages through um, uh, this messages that's about practical Christianity, speaking about things that we don't often have doctrines on, but somehow consumes our life. Things like work and money and hobbies that we've already spoken about. Um, and today we're going to speak about smartphones. Um, we all have one. We all use it. Um, we have to use it somehow to function in this world. And there's great danger and there's great opportunity. And I want us to have a look at that this morning. So, um, or this afternoon, whenever you're doing your homie Sunday. So let me pray for us and then we'll start. Father, use me as a tool for what you want to say and God with you open up our hearts that we would receive it to speak calm over us now in Jesus name order over the settings that we're in so that we'll be able to focus and receive in Jesus name amen all right so we are going to look at smartphones um, in two different ways and I think both are necessary and both are helpful um, for us to engage with our smartphones in a healthy way, in a way that glorifies God. Um, I think many of you would have uh, struggled with the fact that it, uh, um, we spend so much time on our phones and there's so much entertainment on our phones and so many things happening and you find yourself being drawn to this thing more than what you really want to be and yet it's difficult to get out of that space. Now, there are people like Simon Sinek and others who say that the, um, the, 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 the fact that the smartphone is designed to be addictive um, is a good enough reason for us to not even use smartphones or to um, you know, rid our lives of it as much as we, as we can, to see it as this massive problem. Um, that we and our generation have to deal with. And there's value in that. But also, we need to um, take heart and understand that Jesus has overcome this world. And we, we have authority over the things in this world. And we do not have to be scared of things that can cause damage if they are indeed given by God for His glory. And so I want us to look at this and, and um, first of all, recognize that it might be a problem and speak about that a bit. But then secondly, also see that this might be a tool for the glory of God and how that way of viewing it is actually the most healthy way um, to uh, look at our smartphone. So you've probably heard the term digital 
cocaine, which basically says that because smartphones are designed to be addictive, they're designed to give you a lot of dopamine um, hits, as they call it, whenever you see messages, whenever you get notifications, um, whenever you see there's an email coming in, you get a dopamine hit, which is almost like a little bit of a drug that your body releases. Um, and smartphones are designed to trigger that the whole, the whole time. And dopamine makes you feel great. Um, and it, it also is very addictive. So if you find fantastically healthy things that gives you dopamine, um, you can get addicted to fantastic things. <laughs> um, like hearing the voice of God, for instance, or seeing people healed or sharing the gospel. Those things give us the same kind of hits. And if we get addicted to them, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be addicted to very good things. Addicted might be a strong word, but you know what I mean. So we can be, and most of us are, in some sense, addicted to our phones. And it's important for us to recognize this. Um, I've read and agree with the fact that there are signs that would indicate to whether you might be addicted to your smartphone. They say if you're driving and you're just two minutes away from home and you get a notification, you know something might be going on on your phone, but you just cannot wait two minutes. You, you will pick up your phone and look at it while you're driving, even if you're just two minutes away from home. Chances are you're addicted. If you wake up in the morning and the very first thing you want to do every morning is pick up your phone, open it and see what's happening on it, you might be addicted. If you've lost the um, ability to wait without looking at your phone, to sit in a queue or to wait for someone that's late for an appointment and you've lost the ability to just be and wait, but you always take out your phone. Whenever nothing's happening, your phone comes out, you might be addicted um, so we 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 have to recognize this I think it's very important for many of us to recognize that we might be addicted we might think because I'm so strong I'm so amazing I'm not addicted I mean that's a hard word yet let's be honest and think of how you use your phone um, and the way that you engage with it because your body produces dopamine that gets tr triggered when the phone's used and so you will get addicted. You cannot not get addicted if you use your phone a lot and if you don't manage it well. So if that's you, which is most of us, we need to recognize it and acknowledge it. As with any other addiction, it's important that we do. Now, I want to speak about some strategies, practical strategies that you could use to manage this problem. Because the, the fact of the matter is, most of us cannot live life without our phones. I'm recording this message on my phone. I'm sending communications to you via my phone. There's a lot of good I do. I, I manage my budget and my banking through my phone. I communicate with my family through my phone. Um, I check the weather on my phone. I use it as, as a GPS when I drive. Um, and for work and family and all kinds of things, we cannot not use it. Um, we would be completely excluded from this world. And we are called to be not of the world, but in the world. Um, so therefore, if it is a problem, let's look at some helpful strategies to manage the problem. And then we're going to look at even a better way um, of looking and viewing your smartphone that might help you into health and a healthy way to look at it going forward. But some strategies to manage so something I use and that I've found helpful and that I've heard others do um, that is helpful. The first thing is I don't have any social media apps on my phone unless, and I want to say this, I believe this, unless you feel called by God to be present on social media and active in it for whatever reason, um, don't be on it. You can have your profiles whenever God leads you to do something there, but don't get on it. You will be addicted to it. So get the social media apps off your phone um, so that it's harder to access the, them. The other thing is you can set your screen to black and white. Um, it lessens the attractiveness of it and you might be less inclined to actually use it. The other thing that works really well is if you have a longish password to type in every time you want to swipe to unlock. So 
Don't just have it on swipe and then it unlocks. Have a long password to type in so that when you pick up your phone, you're like, oh, do I really have to? This is a long password to type in with the special characters and everything. And often that's helping you to just realize I don't actually need this. You know, it was a knee jerk reaction to just pick up my phone and swipe and open. But now I can actually think about it and be like, you know what? I'm not going to type in this long password. I'm going to let it go. Some phones have got different settings that you could use, so like a home setting and an evening setting that only certain apps are active. You could have, you could explore the options that your phone has for that, that could help you. All my sounds are off. I've got no notification sounds that comes through. The only notifications that come through from apps is the is is my bank um, notifications. All the others I've I've disabled so whenever I see an app starting to push through notifications I go in and I disable notifications because they distract us this in a much similar way the news feed on my Google when I open up Google there's a news feed that comes up um, I've disabled the news feed because it start to scroll and scroll and scroll disable feeds disable notifications um, there are great apps for accountability if you struggle with your phone apps like Q Studio and apps like Covenant Eyes that you could really explore, especially if things like pornography is an issue for you or the way you use your phone um, is a very um, is a big problem. You could use that and be accountable to others through it. Um, you could switch on the blue filter reduction thing on your phone because blue light that comes from the phone really inhibits our sleeping. So when you use your phone in within a couple of hours before you sleep, it's really bad for you and it hinders your sleep. So on my phone, I've got the red light filter. I think it is blue light filter, more red light, always on my laptop and my phone. It's always on so that it doesn't give me that blue light that then has um, inhibits sleep. Um, then some apps or like all apps, I think on phones, these days you can set timers on them and say, I'm not going to spend more than in when it's a day on YouTube and then it gives you a reminder or it switches the app off or something like that. Um, the other thing that has uh, helped for me, especially when I drive, is when I get into the car, I chuck the phone in the boot. <laughs> Even when I have to use Google Maps, then I would connect it to the Bluetooth or have a um, headphone in like a Bluetooth headphones so I can listen to what the phone's telling me from the boot. But having the phone in the car has been a very big problem to me. I really struggle with that. So I throw it in the boot. Um, a phone box at home can work when you're accountable to your wife. And when you come home, you throw the phone in the box. And uh, whoever your housemate or your um, wife or husband is, then you we've had a rule. Um, it's not currently working, to be honest, but it could work. Um, you have a rule that whenever you want to take your phone out, you need to consult the other one and give them the reason for why you need to use your phone right now. Otherwise, you can't just use it and it stays in the box when you're at home. Um, I think it's healthy to not have the phone in the bedroom um, at all if you can manage to do that. That's also rather helpful. So I think there might be many more strategies, but I thought to just give you a few. Maybe some of you can just say, aha. Maybe I can do this and this and this and this and this just to, um, you know, manage the free flow, the free access and the addictive behaviors, the unlocks, the mindless scrolling um, that I find myself engaging in to deal with the problem that it might be. Now, moving on to a better way to look at it, and this has changed my view on smartphones completely, is... And I felt led by God the one day. I felt God spoke to me the one day um, and said, he said something like, but if you could see your phone as a healthy extension of yourself to the glory of God, then that would be the right way to view it in order to make sure that you use it in a healthy way. A healthy extension of yourself to the glory of God. Now we read in scripture and our anchor scripture for this would also be that whatever you do in word or deed, let it all, all of it be to the glory of God. And let it be in the name of Jesus and to the glory of God. So 
If I use my phone, whatever I do with my phone, I must ask myself, am I doing it to the glory of God? Is this what I'm busy doing? And the other word, the, the, the healthy extension of myself is specifically I've felt something in my spirit, I believe, from God that said, this is actually a healthy, this, should, this is an extension of yourself. And I'm like, no, this is not an extension of myself. This is a problem. I dissociate with my phone, yet I engage with it the whole time, but it's not me, you know, it's this problem I have to manage. And I felt God say, no, no, it's actually an extension of yourself. It's an extension of yourself. You, you use it for church, you use it for family, you use it for your finances, you use it for everything that's precious in your life, just about. How can you say that it's not an extension of yourself? And I realized... This is helpful. If I see the phone as I see my hand as something to use for the glory of God, something given by God to be used. Yes, I believe it is given by God. I, I believe technology is, is a gift from God that if we could steward it correctly, could use it for the glory of God as he leads. For some of you, he would lead us to not have a smartphone at all. For others, he would lead us to not have WhatsApp at all. For others, he would use on Instagram and Twitter and um, through all the different technologies out there. We should be open to that. But for most of us, it is an extension of ourselves. So let's contend that it would be a healthy extension to the glory of God. So now I start looking at my phone as a positive thing. I look at my phone and I don't go, oh, I have to use you. I go and I look at it and go like, this is a tool for the glory of God. How can I use it in such a way? And in terms of psychology, it is positive psychology. If you look at things in a positive way, if you look at, let's say, for instance, if you focus on your strengths more than your weaknesses, the chances are that you would overcome your weaknesses easier. Um, when we look at, uh, at, at the Christian walk, we see a similar kind of um, um, a way of thinking when, when you see Christianity as... I shouldn't do X, Y, Z. I shouldn't sin. I should strive to stop sinning. If that's the Christianity that we um, hold on to, we're going to always struggle with sin. But if we say, thank you, Jesus, that you've forgiven me, and now you've called me to do certain things, to do X, Y, Z, not to, not to stop only, to do things, then the things that you shouldn't do, just no time. The things of, it, things of the world grow strangely dim. When we start to do the things that brings glory to God. That's, those are the things he calls us to. Rather than to just try and, and stop things. So having a positive view on the phone in that way. Says that if I see this thing and smile when I see it. And go, oh, it's a tool for the glory. It's such a powerful tool to the glory of God. How can I use this thing to glorify God with? Then I find myself looking at it and using it. And asking myself the whole time. Like, is this to the glory of God? Am how, how can I glorify God through this? How can this be a healthy extension of, of the Son of God that I am? And how can I make His name famous and great with this in a healthy way? Then I see and find myself using it for good things. And I find myself not wanting to use it for less good things. It really works. It's a tool for discipleship. It's a tool for money management and budget management. It's a tool for Bible study. It's a tool for family engagement. It's a tool for planning your life and having reminders of important things. It's a tool to engage with, to engage church with. Our whole church is on one WhatsApp group. I sometimes wonder how do you do church if you don't have them on one WhatsApp group? Group. You phone every small group leader, he phones every member. It's the way we do things right now. And it helps. It's the way that we communicate at work. We use our smartphones. All the more the communication is less via email and more just using the phone in various applications. I'm Like I said, I'm recording this message from my smartphone because it can do it. I don't... Um, I don't need anything more than my smartphone to record this message. It's a great tool. So if you have to use your smartphone, ask yourself that 
If scripture says whatever we do in word and deed, it must all be to the glory of God. How can I use my fine to the glory of God? And thank God for the gift that it is to us. And then I believe that the addiction that it causes and can cause, I believe that through the power of God, it can be overcome. I believe that through the leading of the Holy Spirit and the miracles that God can do in our minds and in our hearts, He, he could, yes, He could give us strategies on how to manage it in a healthy way, but He could also just make us overcome these obstacles so that we can use this powerful thing without it actually ruining our lives so look at your phone in a healthy way look at your phone in a positive way as a tool to glorify him with i hope this was helpful it's been very helpful to me um, i want you guys to now have a discussion with each other around your phone your phone habits whether your phone might be a problem whether you are maybe addicted and maybe just have to acknowledge it for the first time and don't make light of it. It's a real, it's a real th thing, and you need to really acknowledge that it's a problem. So acknowledge that. Maybe speak about some coping strategies you could use. There are more than the ones that I just listed. Um, they, but but speak about that. Share with each other maybe some of the coping strategies that you use, managing strategies that you use, and then declare. Pray and declare to God that, God, I'm going to from now on see this thing as a healthy extension of who I am. And I want to use it to your glory alone lead me. And ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in that so that you could use this powerful tool in a beautiful way to extend the kingdom of God with. I want you to share with each other and pray with each other so that we'd be able to overcome um, this and be able to extend the kingdom of God through our smart phones. I hope this has been helpful. And um, may you have fantastic discussions. I'm going to pray and close for us. Father, I pray that you would give us new eyes to look at our smartphones with. Eyes that smile when you look at it and see the opportunity. Oh God, we recognize the danger, but we know that you've overcome this world and we know that you could give us the power to overcome and use it for your glory. But I pray for each one of us where we are, Father, whether we're very fragile in, in this space, and very addictive, and we have addictive personalities like I do, Father, or whether we don't have any problem with this, Father, whether we, it doesn't matter where we on, are on that spectrum. For all of us, I pray for a revelation, Father, that this thing can be used for the glory of God and the extension of the kingdom over this, on this earth. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Enjoy the discussion and enjoy praying for each other. Bless you. Bye-bye.